This is the lecture for Chapter 4 of your text titled Making Decisions. In this chapter, here are some of the things that we'll be talking about. We'll be talking about Boolean expressions, sometimes called logical expressions. Uh, they go along very closely with the selection structure that we were talking about in Chapter 3. We have relational comparison operators to compare values to each other. As far as logical operators, we'll start out talking about AND, OR, AND NOT operators. Sometimes you need to make selections or decisions based on ranges. We'll talk about how to do that. And then in a previous chapter, we talked about precedence and associativity of operators. There is precedence and associativity that we will need to deal with with the AND and the OR operators. So we'll start out with what is a Boolean expression. Basically, a Boolean expression is something that is true or false, or the result of the expression is true or false. When the computer deals in binary, a lot of times the true and false are represented as one for true and zero for false, or something closely resembling that. Every selection we use, we ask a question, and if the expression results in a true answer, we execute one block of code. If it results in a false and there's an else condition, we will do the else block of code. So basically, this is what we're talking about. We've seen this before. It was called a dual alternative selection structure in Chapter 3. So you're coming along in your logic. You hit a decision point. You answer a question. And if the answer is yes, we go one way. If it's no, we go the other. And yes is true, no is false. So even though we use a yes and no, true and false would work as well. If we only need to do something if the expression is true, then we have a single alternative selection structure. Again, something we talked about in Chapter 3. And if the result of that is yes or true, we would execute a block of code. If the answer is no, we would uh, continue on with whatever came after the selection statement or the selection structure. Um, so here we have a flowchart um, and pseudocode both for overtime payroll program. I think we've seen this before. And you'll see down about in the middle, well, actually up under housekeeping, there's a name not equal to quit. Uh, if it's not equal to quit, then we would do the detail loop and we would keep looping there. Also, down in the middle, we have a decision based on did they work more hours than is typical in a work week in their time, therefore they need um, overtime. So we have a couple of selections um, that we could use Boolean expressions um, and comparison operators to come up with the answer. So when we're making a decision, we have what's called an, an if-then statement. So if condition is true, then execute the first block of code, else if the condition is false, we execute the block of code following the, the else clause or that is part of the else clause. So if it's true, we do the then portion. If it's false, we do the else portion. Now, we have comparison operators to basically compare values. For example, is one value greater than another? Is it greater than or equal? Or is it equal, etc. Um, your book talks about something called trivial expressions, and these are questions that you might ask that if you use constant values like the question 20 equals 20, that's always true. The question does 30 equal 40, that is always false. So typically you're going to, you know, there's really no reason for trivial expressions because you already know uh, what the answer is going to be. So as far as the actual operators, your book mentions six popular ones. Um, we'll start out with equivalency at the top. Are two values equal to each other or exactly the same as each other? I think back in chapter 3 I told you that in an assignment statement when you have something like set x equal to x plus 1 
the equal sign instead of being read as equal should be read as get set to and that was kind of setting you up for this if you're asking if one value is equal to another or maybe is the value in one variable equal to the value in another variable that's called equivalency um, if we're talking about strings are these two strings equal that means they have to be exactly the same as each other um, you'll an important note over in the discussion portion is a lot of modern languages for equivalency use two equal signs that is to differentiate equivalency from the assignment but basic um, uses just uh, um, equal sign for both and depending upon what context it's used in it will either mean assignment or if it's in for example the condition of an if statement then it will be used as equivalency so going down the list real quick we have greater than less than greater than and equal less than or equal and then um, less than greater than is basically not equal to so if the two values on both sides of that operator are not equal to each other then that condition will be true so those are the relational comparison operators for uh, comparing values you can use equal greater than and less than to make all uh, any decision you need. Sometimes it's convenient to use some of the other operators that were shown as well. Uh, the not equal to can sometimes be um, difficult because it's basically a double negative so you want to think real closely about your logic and make sure that you know if two values are not equal then this operator will result true and make sure that when it is true the block of code that you would like to be executed is in the then clause and not the else clause so here's an example of logic uh, you have something called a customer code and if the customer code is one um, I guess this is a special customer uh, they get a 50% discount otherwise you're only going to give them a 25% discount so when you're coming along looking at the pseudocode if the customer code is not equal to 1 then their discount is 25 cents else their discount if their customer code is 1 is 50 cents or 50% so um, that's an example of how you have to be careful when you're using the not equal so possibly a better way to have done this was to ask the question the thing we care about is if the customer code is one so we can actually change that logic to say if the customer code is one then they get a 50 percent discount otherwise everybody else gets a 25 percent so that's basically called the positive equivalent we're not using that uh, what ultimately seems like a double negative. Um, you just need to make sure you use the correct operator for the expression to be true and greater than the left hand side uh, needs to be the bigger number. Um, I think when you're learning about this in elementary school or possibly junior high that you know you have the opening on the greater than or less than sign well the big opening is where the big value is and the point is where the small value is um, is how they kind of told you that was the mnemonic they gave you to try to help and make sure you got it correctly um, the other issue you have is if you want to generate a random number between one and a hundred a lot of times if you're not careful it might the starting point instead of being one might be zero or two and on the other boundary the maximum of a hundred if you're not careful a lot of times the biggest number generated might be 99 could potentially be 101 so what they're calling a boundary condition or a boundary you need to be careful and make sure that if that boundary is to be included uh, that you use uh, appropriate values and appropriate relational operators to make that happen. Um, a compound condition is one that uses uh, multiple comparisons and then we'll use 
they're talking about the AND operator right now. Possibly we'll talk, we will talk about the OR operator in a moment. But basically a compound condition allows you to ask a more complicated question, if you will, um, that will have multiple answers and then using the logical operators we will evaluate and see if we get true or false. So for an AND decision, so if you have a, a value X and a value Y, for the result of X and Y to be true, X has to be true and Y has to be true. Um, another way you could accomplish this is um, using if statements instead of you know test one condition and then test another. So here's the the flow chart again. This is for a cell phone um, billing program. Notice in the middle of the flow chart they want to know has the person exceeded the number of calls and have they exceeded the number of minutes. If that's true, then you're going to add a premium to their bill above and beyond their basic bill. So over in the detailed loop on the right in the pseudocode, they do one condition is calls made greater than the base calls variable. Then if that's true, you ask the question if the call minutes is greater than minutes. So the same logic that we had over in the flow chart. And that is how we would do it if we only could ask one yes no question at a time. Now what we can do is when we nest those with and it doesn't really matter which question we ask first because once we hit a false value we're going to fall out of all the loops. As long as we keep getting true values then we will continue on asking additional questions. Uh, one thing you should do for something that I believe we'll talk about in a moment called short circuiting is in the case of an and for your program to be the most efficient you should ask the question first that is least likely to, to be true. Um, and what that does is that will eliminate future um, comparisons that would need to be made. As we'll see in a moment if you're doing a whole bunch of ands together, once you hit a false, you know the answer is false. You don't need to conv continue evaluating additional logical expressions. So um, the and operator allows you to ask a question is this and this true? When we talk about logical operators, usually the best way to understand this is with something called a truth table, which we will see in a moment. And then the process I was talking about where you ask the question that's likely to be false in the case of an and, and as we'll see in a moment, the one that's most likely to be true in the case of an or, uh, that is because of something called short circuiting. Uh, which is a very important concept to understand. So here we have a truth table for AND. AND is a binary operator. As we learned about in Chapter 3, a binary operator means that it requires two values to operate on. Just like math expressions, you have the keyword AND, and then the values it's going to operate on is the value immediately to the left, and the value immediately to the right of the AND operator. So basically X and Y is true if both X and Y are true. Now they've kind of shown this truth table upside down from the way most people would do. Uh, they would do it like you were counting in binary and you would have false, 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 true, true, false, true, true, which would be 0, 1, 2, 3. But basically if X and Y is true the result is true, which is the first line of the truth table. And then in all the other cases, if they're not both true, then the result is false. So this is the truth table for the AND operator and AND expressions. So here what they've done is they have combined the two decision points into one. If calls made is greater than calls and call minutes is greater than minutes, then add the premium to the bill. Otherwise, um, there is no else clause. Do nothing. 
And I think we talked about this before, but when you say something like do nothing, that means you have a null statement or a null block of code. So there is no block of code on the left side of this decision point where the, the no is. So that's called a null expression. Uh, we talked about this already. It's a binary operator. It means it requires an expression or a value to evaluate on both sides of the operator. Now, the, another very important operator when you talk about logic or Boolean uh, arithmetic is the OR statement or OR decision. So it is a binary operator and as we'll see in a moment, it's truth table. X or Y is true if both the X or I'm sorry, the OR expression is true if X or Y is true. So only one of them have to be true for the statement to be true. So down at the bottom, for example, if you want to ask somebody to dinner, but it has to be on Friday or Saturday, you're basically saying, are you free for dinner Friday or are you free for dinner Saturday? So that would be an example of where either is acceptable. If they're free Friday, okay, great. If they're free Saturday, okay, great, that's true. If they're free both nights, then the expression is still true. In this case, um, you can ask any question first, but you really should ask the question that is most likely to be true first. Because in OR, once you have a true value, if you have a string of ORs, once there is a true, there is no reason to evaluate any more of the expressions because the whole statement is going to be true. And what that will do is that will eliminate, it says it eliminates extra decisions, but in reality what you're doing is eliminating extra evaluations of expressions which take computer uh, resources and by using the short circuiting your program will execute faster. Um, okay, um, everything on this slide I've pretty much already said. Um, here's the truth table for OR. The rightmost column, a lot of times you draw a line uh, between the second and third column because the X and Y on the left are the expressions you're evaluating or the, the values you're evaluating. And then if you drew a line there, everything on the right of that would be answers. So X or Y is true if X or Y or both are true. So you just have to have one value that is true and then your whole expression is considered uh, true. So here they're basically saying if you've exceeded your calls or you've exceeded your text you need to pay this premium. So there's the example in the flowchart as well as the pseudocode with that. Now what they're showing you is how if you weren't using a compound statement you would have to divide this. Notice that you have the exact same block of code duplicated twice. The first, in my opinion, is a lot easier to read. It's a lot easier to represent. And if for some reason you need to tack something else on there and you only change the code in the bottom flow chart in one of the blocks, then it would probably not be behaving correctly, where in the top you only have one place to change it. That was also an advantage of when we were talking about modules, that if you only have one place to change the logic, but multiple things in your program are going to use it, you change it once in a module and it's correct. Otherwise you have to go hunting for all the places you would need to change it. That would be true as far as nesting um, logical expressions as well. So basically they're giving you the logic, add $20 to anyone who makes more than 100 calls and to anyone that has more than 500 minutes and then add $20 to the bill of anyone who's made more than 100 calls or has used more than 500 minutes. So one of those is an AND and the other is, is an OR. And of course that just needs to match up with whatever the billing procedure is for the phone company. So basically what they're showing you here is this flowchart 
technically works but you do not have a structured loop remember in a structured loop you always need to come back up to right before the decision point of, of the loop or in this case the the if statement so we cannot make a structured program by trying to write something that matches up with this flowchart okay here is basically having what they're going to call dead blocks of code blocks of code that you can never get to so you know if you have one person what they're showing here is it's going to be impossible for them to be both under 13 and over 64 so this is basically a, a, a logic error uh, you know the answer is always going to to be no so probably what they wanted in this case was, was an or if, if they're under 13 or their senior citizen over 64 then we want to give them a discounted price um, for, for their ticket so here they have just shown the corrections both in the pseudocode and the flowchart uh, to, to use an or so they're just pointing out you need to make sure that you use the select I'm sorry the logical operators and an or correctly so now here they've just used the wrong operator um, they, they say basically if the patron is over the minimum age or they're less than the maximum age you want to charge them full price well what they really wanted to do was use less than if they're less than the minimum age or greater than the maximum age uh, give give them a discount so they just use the, the wrong operators um, or th they could go back and, and use the and instead of reversing those so there's multiple ways to, to solve a problem you just need to make sure that you look at the logic possibly tracing through your program you know if you were tracing this program you'd probably want to do it for somebody that was 11 somebody that was 12 somebody that was 30 something somebody that was 64 65 and 66 and trace through all the options make sure they always get charged the correct price and then you know your program will work correctly and the correct decision will be made another operator is the not operator sometimes it's easier to explain what you want the matches not to be and then put the not in front of it to make it true so so here uh, you want to say if they are not less than 18 then they can register to vote now not is a unary operator which means it operates on one value or one expression that value or expression is the one immediately following the keyword not so for the truth table you have X its possible values are true and false and then as the answer not X so not true is false not false is true so sometimes this is called the complement operator but basically it takes the opposite not true is false not false is true um, the trivial expressions we talked about before the ones that always evaluate to true or always evaluate to false if you're not careful using the not you can come up with trivial expressions so if not employee department equals one or not employee department equals two then output employee is not in department one or two uh, so that would um, they have the thing down here where they basically wanted to put the not in front of the whole thing employee department equals one or two uh, those are when you don't want it to execute so you put the keyword not in front of it and group that expression in parentheses just like we saw with mathematical operators putting things in parentheses in addition to clarifying what you are complementing 
Um, also, we'll make sure you get the correct order of precedence that, that you should be getting. So uh, that is a common error that you can make using the not. We talked about range selection. So what happens is, you know, I use the example 1 to 100. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put the 1 and the 100 as the ranges. And then it's best to use less than and equal or greater than and equal to include those endpoints. A lot of times you will say, you know, I want it to be between, if you say you want a number between 1 and 100, does that mean you want it between 1 and possibly 100, or does that mean you want it between 2 and 99? So you have to be careful. First, make sure you understand what the person wants, and then you want to use greater than or equal or less than or equal to make sure you get those endpoints if it's supposed to be inclusive. Um, so here they have an example that we're going to offer discounts based upon the number of items a person orders. If they order 10 or less, they're not going to get any discount. If they purchase 11 to 24, they're going to get a 10% discount, etc. So we have ranges here that we need to uh, deal with. So here we have a whole bunch of selections. Um, if the item ordered is less than or equal to range 1, um, that means up to 10, they're going to get discount 1, which is 0%. If they didn't order 10 or less, then we have to go check and say, okay, did they order up to 24? If so, give them discount 2, etc. So here they've done it with one logical expression appearing in each of the decision points and then they have given you the pseudocode uh, to match up with that. So again you have to be real careful to check your endpoints. In this case we had four ranges so each of those four have two endpoints and you want to make sure something doesn't happen. For example if you accidentally on that first decision used, um, let me go back to that, up here in the very first decision in the flow chart, if you had just said less than, um, you're going to give them the, the wrong discount. It's also possible to set these up so if they ordered 25 items, for example, that you gave them no discount because you did not account for 25 in your range checking. So you need to understand what you're supposed to do for what values and then be very careful with both the logical operators and your comparison operators to make sure that every possible value has an answer and it is the correct answer. Um, if you only have one answer, that's a trivial expression. Don't even ask the question. You already know the answer. So you shouldn't waste time having the computer do a comparison. So in this flow chart, they're, they're showing you if you make it to are the items less than range 3, which is 50, then you're asking a question, is the number of items ordered greater than range 3? Well, you know that is the, the answer. If, if it hasn't been between 0 and 50, then obviously the number is more. So just go ahead and, and just say they get the, the discount. So they're basically, in this case, have an inefficient execution because you have a trivial expression if it makes it all the way to, the, to that point. So here you you're basically have some inefficiency or redundancy. So if items ordered is not less than or equal to range 1, it has to be greater than range 1. So if you make it to the second decision, that first expression is always going to be true. So you're doing comparison using CPU cycles to do something that the answer is always going to be true. And then you're ending it with another expression. So if that second expression is false, the whole expression is going to be false. 
if that second answer is true, the whole expression is going to be true. So that is redundant and inefficient. So make sure if you already know the answer, you don't test for it again. Um, you can use combinations uh, of AND and OR, but one thing to understand is if you have a whole bunch of ANDs together, for the expression to be true, everything has to be true. So in this case, you have three scores. All three of them have to be greater than some minimum score to pass the class. But if you failed any particular uh, assignment out of assi assignment one, two, and three, then you fail. Notice there's a mistake in this code. Score three should be together. There should not be a space in the middle of it. When you're when you have multiple conditions and only one of those has to be true, then you're going to use an OR. So they've basically changed the logic and said, okay, you've had three assignments. As long as you pass one of them, you're going to pass the class. So, you know, whichever those matches up with what the instructor said in the syllabus, uh, you would want to make sure you use the, the correct logic. Now, when you use them first, I'm, I'm sorry, when you use them all together, the AND operator has a higher level of precedence than the OR, which means all the ORs are going to happen. So basically, what they want to say is if the person's less than 12 or they're over 65, if either of those are true, and the rating of the movie is G, then we want to do something. Well, what happens is it will say, are they over 65 and the rating G? That'll either be true or false. And then in this expression, if the person is less than 12, then it will, I guess, let them uh, in the movie. Um, so really what you want to do is you want to ask a question about their age. Are they a child? Are they a senior citizen? And then do something based upon the, the G rating. So to override that precedence, just like with math expressions, you would use parentheses to make sure it works correctly. Um, you can nest ifs, and that allows you to avoid uh, putting these together. But in reality, it's probably better to make sure you know how the AND operators work, the ORS operators work, understand the precedence, and then just use parentheses uh, to correct that. Otherwise, here again, you have two decisions where if the rating is G and they're less than 12, you want to do less than or equal to 12, you want to do one thing, or if they're greater than 65, you want to do the same thing. So when you duplicate blocks of codes like that, especially if you know, you're not calling a module, uh, that can lead to, to some problems uh, later in your program. So that finishes up my lecture on Chapter 4. Here are some of the things that you should take away from this chapter.